Lesson 74a. Ecumenism. What is ecumenism? The word ecumenism was first used by Protestants in 1919 to designate the work for the union of the various churches or denominations. Today more than ever before, the various Protestant denominations are feeling the need for unity. Definite Work for Unity, the ecumenical movement, was given a decisive impulse by the International Missionary Conference of Ehrenberg in 1910. It led to the formation of the World Council of Churches. However, not all the Protestant denominations are members of the World Council of Churches. What should be the attitude of Catholics to those Christians who do not belong to the Catholic Church? Catholics should first be keenly aware of the scandal of our divisions. The thought of it must make us suffer. The dissensions among Christians are the chief cause of the weakness of Christianity in the modern world and the greatest obstacle to its propagation among non-Christians. This is why our Lord Jesus Christ prayed so earnestly in his great sacerdotal prayer before his Passion. Holy Father, keep in thy name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one even as we are one, as thou, Father, in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. We should feel kindly towards non-Catholics, be they Protestants or Orthodox. We should regard them not as enemies, but as our separated brethren. Brethren, because baptised into Jesus Christ, separated from us, generally through no fault of their own, but because of historical and theological reasons which have been aggravated over the years. They must therefore be considered as being in good faith. This attitude requires overcoming a heavy heritage of ill-feeling, hatred, prejudice and distrust, the memory of persecutions and cruel wars. In these sad divisions, no side can claim to be without fault. Every unkind thought I keep about our separated brethren, every unkind word or action, perpetuates and deepens the division of Christendom. At present, the obstacles to union of Protestant or even Orthodox churches with the Catholic Church are indeed great. But all things are possible to God. Prayer for unity is a pressing duty of every Christian. A special occasion for prayer is the Unity Octave, January 18th to the 25th, which was approved by Benedict the 15th and is now kept by numerous Catholics and non-Catholics all over the world. Catholics should above all try to give good example. Nothing is more effective in the eyes of non-Catholics than the exemplary lives led by good Catholics. The more intensely all Christians try to live the Gospel, the closer they will come together. Most important is charity shown to all, non-Catholics as well as Catholics. In talking with non-Catholics, we should avoid discussions that only serve to increase bitterness. We should know our own faith well enough to present it clearly and honestly, and we should be aware also of the many basic truths that unite us all as Christians. Among theologians also, the old polemical discussions are being replaced by dialogue, that is to say, a friendly exchange in which each side endeavours to understand the position and doctrines of the other. This ironical approach does not mean that the Catholic waters down the truth, but he learns how to present it so that it will be better understood and more easily received.